Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jay Mehta here from Mumbai and in this video we are going to try and discuss what is urine incontinence. Remember, in all people whom we categorize as normal, these are people where they have voluntary control of urine. I'll just frame it very easily. That means, let's say you are traveling from Bombay to Pune, you've crossed Lonavala and you feel that you have an urge to pass urine. But Pune is approximately 30 kilometers away. So in order to cover up that distance, because occasion and social circumstances don't allow, you are able to hold your urine. Rather, you are able to control your urine. Whenever somebody is able to control urine, it is called as continence. That is called as urine continence. So what does the word incontinence means? That means you do not have a perfect control over passage of urine. That is the actual definition of urine incontinence. That means your voluntarily ability in order to hold on to the urine is lost. Whenever we talk of urine incontinence, we would like to divide urine incontinence into three major types. The first type and something which is extremely common is called as urge incontinence. The word is very simple. It is self-explanatory. That means whenever you have an urge to pass urine, you have to go to the washroom and pass urine. You are somehow not able to control that urge and that is called as urge incontinence. It is very common, especially in women who are in the postmenopausal age group. That means in women who are aged more than 45, 50, it's very, very common. The second most common reason why a lot of women have urge incontinence is due to diabetes. And the incidence of diabetes in our country is increasing very rampantly as you know. Third cause which causes urge incontinence is urine tract infections. And apart from this, there are various other causes which we will discuss when we have a detailed discussion on urge incontinence. After urge incontinence, the second most common type of incontinence is called as stress urine incontinence. Again, the word is very simple. That means whenever the bladder or the urine bladder is subjected to any form of stress. When I say stress, I mean to say of pressure. So that means whenever you cough, the abdominal muscles becomes tight. Whenever you sneeze, the abdomen becomes tight. Whenever you jump, you dance, you walk, you smile. In all these situations, you involuntarily pass urine without your knowledge. And that is called as stress incontinence. Remember, stress incontinence is slightly less common as compared to urge incontinence. But stress incontinence is very, very distressing for the lady. Imagine a lady who is just talking, having a social conversation and suddenly she coughs and around two or three drops of urine have spilt over. That's going to be very, very embarrassing. Stress incontinence, it is believed that again, it's very common in the elderly age group of women. But in our country, one important cause needs to be remembered and that is a traumatic delivery. When I say of a traumatic delivery, it's usually an occasion where a normal delivery was assisted with instrumentation, which we normally call as forceps assistance or vacuum assistance. These could be potential predisposing factors for causing stress incontinence in a later part of the life. However, one must remember that once a lady is diagnosed with stress incontinence, it is something which is beautifully correctable when a surgery is done. I repeat, if somebody is diagnosed with stress incontinence, it is something that can be corrected beautifully following surgery. And that should be a very important take home point for women who suffer with stress incontinence. The third cause is something called as mixed, where a lady has urge 
a lady has stress and both the factors are combined in varying proportions. Even this is pretty common, but remember it is not as common as a genuine urge incontinence or a genuine stress incontinence. We will discuss the treatment options of urge mixed as well as stress incontinence in our subsequent sessions. Finally, before we conclude this short video, I would like to tell you that women usually when they have incontinence issues with the urine, they become very socially recluse. They do not disclose this problem to even their family members. And that is something which is very unfortunate. Because if they disclose this condition to their family members early, they can seek medical help early. And once they seek medical help, they might be able to get the correct and accurate treatment for this extremely socially distressing condition. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. This video is going to be followed up with our subsequent video series on incontinence. Should there be something that anyone wishes to ask, you can post them in our comment section. Me or one of my team members will try to get back to you as quickly as we can. Thank you so much.